Thank you for listening to the Gift Up podcast. And I guess I was right on that video I did about Ngakwe because I did leave everybody at the end of the video by saying it probably won't be the Eagles, Raiders, or Jets. And I was right. And Ngakwe wanted to go to a contender, and he did. The Vikings are a playoff team. And now he can show the national media what he can do and show a lot more people what he can do. Ngakwe didn't want to go to a team where he was going to be thrown under the bus or blamed for the team's problems. He wanted to go to a place where he could compliment them and be the star player that we know he can be. Now, that being said, this is an absolute steal by the Minnesota Vikings. A second-round pick and a third-round pick for Yannick Ngakwe? Are you kidding me? And again, I think there were lower-level teams that were probably offering a first-round pick, but there was no way in hell he was going there. Now, with the Vikings, this means a lot. Now, I want to just say I had a little bit of a negative view on the Vikings before this happened. And I'm looking at the offense, and I'm thinking about no more Stephon Diggs. I'm thinking about the Minnesota Vikings track record at drafting receivers. Yeah, they found Diggs, but that was a sleeper pick. You know, but I look at that Laquan Treadwell pick not so long ago, and now they draft Justin Jefferson. You know, I, I can't help but worry. Adam Thielen's injury concerns, Delvin Cook's unhappiness and injury concerns, Kirk Cousins being gun shy. Those are all legit worries. On the defensive side, I was looking at a defensive line that was getting deteriorated. Daniel Hunter was the only one left. But now that all changes. And Gakwe and Daniel Hunter get to pair together in a passing league, go after the quarterback, and dare I say this is an elite pass rushing duo. And it's going to make a difference, and it's going to help the Vikings get back to that physical style of play. We're going to come out there, play physical on the D-line, O-line, hit your quarterback in the mouth. We're going to beat you that way. We're not going to win with fancy plays. We're not going to win uh, with an air it out offense. That's not going to be us. It's going to be smash mouth football, hit you in the mouth. That's what they did with this move. And I absolutely love it for Zimmer. This is going to help out the secondary. They know the best remedy to a defense is get after the quarterback. It's going to help from top to bottom. It's going to help the entire team. And again, for a second round pick and a conditional 2022 pick, I cannot believe that they pulled this off and got one of the better pass rushers in this league to pair with Daniel Hunter, who's already established himself. So again, hats off to the Vikings for pulling this off. This is a big deal. I haven't gotten to the Vikings on my power rankings yet, but they're coming up soon. And this is a huge positive. And now I have a lot more things I can say that are positive about the Vikings going forward. And now I think they can actually compete in the NFC North. Before this move, I was thinking Green Bay all the way, no doubt. But this changes things. This really does. Now they can go after these other quarterbacks and wreak havoc on the rest of the NFL and the NFC North, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I am shocked that the Vikings pulled this off. I, I can't, you know, I woke up this morning and saw it. And for a team that was trending downward, this just spiked it right back up. So again, hats off. Now looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars, this is a problem. Now, obviously, they're not a very good football team as it stands. Um, I, that goes without saying their whole entire defense left in the past couple seasons. But this just makes it worse. Uh, you lose a player like Yannick Ngakwe who can do, in my opinion, a little bit more than just stop the quarterback. He's actually a physical player at the defensive end position. I think he can stop the run as well. So if you lose a player like that and you're hoping on players that are rookies or players that are unproven, it's usually not a good thing. And in this case, that's what's going on with Jacksonville. You know, all the star players want out. Nobody wants anything to do with Jacksonville. As I said before, the Jags had another really good draft. They did. They drafted Clavon Kyson. They drafted LaVisca Chanel. C.J. Henderson also in the first round. So th those are good picks. Those are quality picks. And every year they win, but nobody ever wants to stay there. And I think that's been the Jags' problem. I don't know if it's because they might move to London or 
even after they fire Tom Coughlin, if Doug Marone is still the problem with the Jacksonville Jaguars and getting along with the players. Because if that's the case, if Doug Marone can't get along with players and he's going to just keep driving star talent out, they need to get rid of Marone. Now, I like Marone as the head coach. I think he is a good head coach as far as X's and O's and putting your team in position to win. But as far as getting along with players and treating them how you should treat a player and not like a little kid, I think he's got an authority problem. And I think that's why star players continue to want to leave. Now, we didn't actually think Yannick Ngakwe was going to get traded until really today. I mean, we, we speculated on it. We said there were trade rumors that were heating up. But it took a while. And we kind of believed that maybe Ngakwe would stay. But this, again, just shows that players want out. They don't want to play for this organization. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in the leadership. And that is a core problem. That is an issue. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.